page, we're going to be doing basically what we did on page two, but we have to put in the value for the number, okay? And anytime you plug in a negative, you're plugging in all of it, the negative and the number, so put parentheses around it, okay? So when we want to do x squared, when x is negative 15, what are we putting in for x? Negative 15, so what do I have to put around it? Parentheses, because that's my x, right? But what are we doing to him? I want to square him. Do you guys see that I did, here's my x, x squared. Yay, nay? Is that okay? So when, what's going to be squared? Both the negatives, all right? So this is going to be negative 15 times negative 15. But what do we know about a negative times a negative? That's going to be positive, right? I don't know what 15 times 15 is, so I'm going to just go over here and scratch it over off to the side, guys. 5 times 5 is 25. Put your 5, carry your 2. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 2 is 7. Okay, this is where going back to kind of the old school multiplication. Remember when you get done with your 1s, you head over to your other guy, this one, but he's really in the 10 spot, so you have to move over or put a space holder there. 1 times 5 is 5. 1 times 1 is 1. So we need to add 75 to 150. Add straight up and down. 5 times 0, or 5 plus 0 is 5. 7 plus 5 is 12. Carry one. 225 look right. Is that what you guys got? So the square of 15 is 225, but the square of negative 15 is also 225. How is that going to be different for... Negative x squared. Because don't we already know what x squared is? What's x squared? 225. So what do you get when you put a negative in front of it? Negative 225, okay? So remember, the negative hangs out as you square your x. But we already know what this is. We already know that's 225, right? And who's hanging out this whole time? The negative. So remember, this means take your square first. Negative 15 times negative 15 is 225, and whatever you get, make it negative, okay? The negative literally hangs out. It lets you do the math behind it, and then you put the negative in front. Let's see how, on example 12, if things are going to change or if they're going to stay the same, okay? So on 12, it's a little bit different because on 11, they gave you two expressions and one x. Now they're giving you one expression and two y's, all right? So what if y equals 4? Let's start with him. Let's not even worry about this part. Let's just see what 5y squared is when y is 4. Who's hanging out? The 5. What is this when they're shoved next to each other? Multiplication. And what are we plugging in for y? 4. But what do we have to do to our y? Square it, right? Does that look okay as far as plugging it in? The 5 sees the 5. The y is a 4. And what do we have to do to that 4? Square. All right? What's the next move we're going to make? The square. So you can do 4 squared, or you can write it out as 5 times 4 times 4 like that. The reason why I like to write it out like that, because like you can do 4 times 4, which is 16, but a lot of us don't know what 16 times 5 is off the top of our head. If you write it out like this, you can actually do this multiplication first. What's 5 times 4? 20. And then 20 times 4 is easy, because what's 4 times 2? 8, and you put a 0 behind it. To me, that was the easier way to do it. Do you have to do it that way? No. I could do that kind of all in my head without having to go off to the side and do 16 times 5. Guess what you get for 16 times 5? 80. So you can do the 4 times 4 first, get 16, and multiply it by the 5. It doesn't matter. How does that change your answer, or does it change your answer, if y was negative 4? Will it, though? It's going to be the same. Well, maybe not. It's going to be the same. Because what do we do? We take our 5. We take our y. But what is our y? Negative 4 this time. And square it. But didn't we already talk about what a negative times a negative was? 
positive, right? So this is really just 5 times negative 4 times negative 4, but we know that's positive. So it's the exact same numbers, but all positive. So guess what this answer is? Positive 80. I don't even have to do the math because I know that these will be positive. So 5 times 4 times 4, we just did over here, and we got 80. Okay? So that's with every other positive. Yeah, basically. Whenever you have an even number exponent and you have a negative, it's always going to be positive. It's going to be like your positive there. I like 13 because we don't have to do things more than once. We can just do one expression and just plug a different x and a different y in, all right? So on this one, we have x squared, but what is our x? Negative 6, so I'm going to put him in parentheses, and I'm going to square him. Plus y, but what is y? Negative 3. Is that okay for just plugging it in? What do we need to do first? The square. So what is the square? 36. It's 36, right? And if you know it, put it down, right? Why do you know it's 36? Because we know we have a negative times a negative, which gives us a positive. And then we still have this plus negative 3 here. Okay? So I did my square first. So a negative times a negative gives me that positive 36 and I still have this plus negative 3. Again, I'm going to say it every time until we're done. What do you do when you're adding opposite numbers? You don't add, you actually subtract. subtract. So what's the difference between 36 and 3? 33. Is it going to be a positive 33 or a negative 33? Positive because the 36 is positive, okay? And I'm going to say it over and over again because I think this is the hardest section, is the adding and subtracting of negatives. <coughs> Last one. Woo! We have 4. He's going to be there. We have the minus. He's going to be there. And we have the x, negative 8, that we have to square. And it starts looking like kind of like a cluster because you have these negatives and these negatives back to back. But be careful. Don't try to do that too quickly, right? Because we have to square first. Order of operations says take care of your exponents. So that 4 minus in front is going to hang out as we do negative 8 times negative 8. So we have to figure out this answer first before we do 4 minus. But what's negative 8 times negative 8? 64. 64. We know it's positive because it's a negative times a negative, and then 8 times 8 is 64. All right, at this point, again, if you can look at 4 minus 64 and know how to do it in your head, that's fine. But the new thing we learned on Thursday was to make it into an addition problem. So this is 4 plus the opposite, or negative 64. And at that point, it turns into a problem where you're adding opposite signs. So when you add opposite signs, you're not really adding, you're subtracting. So what's the difference between 64 and 4? 60, but what's my sign going to be? Negative. Okay? So, again, you have to get used to this. The front number stays the same, the subtraction changes to addition, and the opposite of the back. At this point, you just remember the rule. If the signs are different, you subtract. Or think of it, $64 in the hole, but then you get $4. You're still in the hole, but you got helped out a little bit. The last one is a bar graph. It's not the most easy bar graph that we've seen. Usually bar graphs are nice and easy, and we can just read it and be done. This one is making us do some work, and it's a lot of work, okay? On objective C, we have to find averages, and we have to remember how to find averages. So on 15, it says, on the graph, find the average of the temperature for the months October through April. So we don't care about May, okay? How do we find an average? We add and then do what? Divide. So what we have to do is we had to add up all the temperatures, and then we have to divide by how many months we have, okay? So I'm just going to write them right here, 17 plus a negative 1 plus a negative 11 plus a negative 13 plus a negative 16. I'm just taking the temperatures for October through April and adding them all. And I'm just writing them. I'm strictly at So 17 plus a negative 1 plus 
a negative 11, okay? So we have to get like this total temperature. And once we get this total temperature, we're gonna divide by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven months to get our average temperature for each month, okay? This is where it's extreme, but just take your time. Remember your rules, okay? Rule one, when you add two of the opposite signs, what do you do? Say it louder. Subtract, and you give it the sign of the bigger number. So what's the difference between 17 and 1? 16. 16, and which number is the bigger number? 17, so that's a positive 16. But don't you agree if you have $17 and then you add a dollar of debt, you'd have $16, okay? Then we have plus negative 11. Okay, I'm just going to move left to right one at a time. This is the same situation. You're adding two of the different signs. So really, you're doing what? Subtracting. What's the difference between 16 and 11? 5. And who's the positive guy? The 16. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you can group them however. Okay. Addition is commutative and associative, so you can group them however you want. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So did we decide this was 5? Yes. Because 16 minus 11 was 5, and then 16 was positive. Okay, and then I'm going to move him down. We just keep moving left to right. <laughs> Guys, it's the same thing. We're adding two opposite signs, so really we're subtracting. What's the difference between 13 and 5? Use your fingers if you have to. 8. Is it going to be a positive 8 or a negative 8? Negative because the 13 is negative. So this ends up being negative 8. Bring him down. I'm going to run out of room, aren't I? I like this. When you add two of the same sign, you add them. So what's 8 plus 16? Again, use your fingers if you need to. 24. But it'll be a minus 24 because they're both in debt. Okay? They both share that sign. Oh, good. It's another situation like that. They're both in debt, so we're going to add them. So what's 24 plus 13? 37. And then they're both in debt, so it'll be negative 27. And who do I still have to? Oh, 37. Why did I put 27 there? We said 37. And who do I still have to add down? The 2. This is the hard one, okay? When you're adding two of the different signs, you don't actually add. You subtract. So what's the difference between 37 and 2? 35. But that 37 is negative. He's really weighing it down. So the answer is, woo! And guess what? We're not done. <laughs> you do all of that, and you're like, wait, all I did was add the temperatures, right? They want me to find the average. So what do I still need to do with 35? I still need to take negative 35 and divide by my 7 months. That's the easy part, though right? Because whenever you divide, it's just the normal division. What's 35 divided by 7? 5. But what's a negative divided by a positive? Negative. So this is negative 5 degrees Fahrenheit. That is, from October to April, guys, the average temperature is negative 5 degrees. 